All right, so quick update. It seems that my video was very well received, except there are still some rumors floating around that I would like to debunk. Specifically, they say that an RC could have happened. I would say that it's still extremely unlikely, and I'll tell you why I'm so sure about that. Me and my friends, um, we are all like computer security professionals. We actually went and reproduced what we believe is the crash that was happening that day. We went into the game's code, we analyzed the game's code, um, we basically reverse engineered the crash, we reverse engineered the game's engine to figure out exactly which piece of code was crashing, and then we analyzed that code in depth, and we saw that, okay, so this is the exploit, this is the bug, this is the vulnerability, and based on my um, analysis, my conclusion is, is that this bug is still extremely difficult to exploit, even given the current circumstances. And I'll go into depth as to why I think that and how I came to that conclusion. So, as soon as that crash came out, me and my friends started doing a little bit of digging because I don't post unsubstantiated shit. So, after we did a bit of digging and we, a bit of asking around, one of our friends in the game modding community pointed us towards these this pair of functions. Crash Funk 1, um, I call it Crash Funk 1, that's not the actual name in the code, um, and Crash Funk 2. So Crash Funk 2, what this basically does is it handles the communication between the game client and respawn servers. So whenever you're in game, <laughs> in the multiplayer menu, respawn is sending you these game packets in HTTPS that are essentially telling you, oh, here are the open invites that you can join. And this is the function, Crash Funk 2 is the function that handles this response from the server. So it processes that response. And what happens is, is that if that response has that malicious username, it can lead to the crash. Inside Crash Funk 2, Crash Funk 2 actually calls Crash Funk 1. Um, and Crash Funk 1 is where the actual bug happens for us. And I'll show you how I got to the res these results. I'll show you my process. So after we located that piece of code, what we did was we basically ripped that part of the game's code out of the game. And then we put it into a basically a standalone program that all it does is it tries to parse these network packets that are coming from respawn servers. And then we're, what, we, what we did was we made a new program that fed this simulator fake inputs that we generate in attempt to reproduce that crash. We essentially used a technique called fuzzing, which is you generate a ton of random different inputs into these into the simulator, which we call a harness. We we passed all these random inputs into the harness in hopes of triggering a crash. And then we let this run for a little bit and we did find a crash. And then after we analyzed those crashes, um, the crash samples are here, we analyzed those crashes and we're like, oh, if we use this payload, we might be able to reproduce the same crash that was happening um, when the bug was being actively exploited. So then what I did was I um, opened up the game and I hooked up the you know debugger, the proxy to it, and then I tested this payload against the game. All right, so I'm gonna show you exactly what's going under the hood with the crash exploit that was happening the other day. I have Titanfall 2 here open on the main menu, and I've also got it hooked up to the debugger. So the debugger is attached to the game, and this lets me inspect all of the game's code memory. It lets me pause the game at certain points to walk through the game's code and see exactly what it's doing. It lets me look at the game's internal code in slow motion. So if there's a crash, I'll see that crash, I'll know exactly how it got to that crash. And I also have a proxy open. So this proxy is basically intercepting all of the game's uh, communication and, and traffic with respawn servers. So this is uh, doing a man in the middle. I can also edit the responses so I can fake response from respawn. So even though respawn has patched the vulnerability on their end, I can still inject like a malicious response into my game client as if they hadn't patched it yet. Obviously this won't work anymore on the real servers, I'm just giving the game some like fake data as if it wasn't patched yet. And because of that I can use that to pass the bad input into the game and get that to trigger the crash. And when that tra crash happens I can basically view it in my debugger and step through it and analyze that crash. So I'm gonna launch the multiplayer right and we can see the game client communicating with the server and we can inspect all these responses. Um, for example, here we can see the, you know, the invite thing. Um, that's what we saw in the payload from the last video, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to configure the proxy so that um, it'll intercept requests 
like this one. Um, so now the next time it tries to do that, see it intercepted it. So now I'm able to edit this response and give it my own data. So um, let me go into the debugger and enable this breakpoint. Um, okay, so let's say I want to change the room to be, um, I'll add some data at the end. This is my data. And then I'll forward this to the game. And now, now you can see that we've reached a breakpoint here in the game, which means that this is the code that's being called to um, basically handle this request from the server. And I can show you that I can actually see the data that I've injected into the game. I can actually go to um, the place in memory that this is the so-called temporary memory location. The game is using to store that response data. You can see this is the data that I injected into the, into the response. So this is not malicious, so there's nothing funky going on yet. So this is that buffer that he said that we were overflowing, right? And I can actually inspect how big the game thinks this buffer ought to be. It thinks that this buffer ought to be um, 33 bytes. And if we look at it, um, indeed, you can see this is uh, 10, 20, 30, hex 33 bytes, right? So that buffer is correctly sized. Now, um, I'm going to resume the game. So let me show you what happens now if I take this response and I inject some malicious data into it. Okay, so this is the malicious payload that we crafted from fuzzing and uh, analyzing the crash. And look what happens when I eject this when I eject this into the game. So I'm going to edit the response. I'm going to add the malicious uh, response. And it, look what happens when I give this to the game. So I'm going to feed this to the game now. We're going to hit that breakpoint that says like, hey, I'm starting to uh, parse this response. Okay. So now uh, I'm going to go to that part where it's handling that bad input. Um, I'm going to have to skip through a few of these, I think. Um, see, we're not there yet. We're still handling um, the UID here. We need to get. We need to wait until we get to this part. We're going to step until we get to that part. So I'm just going to step a few times. Are we there yet? Nope. We're still doing that. Are we there yet? All right, we're almost there. Step a few more times. All right, now we're about to handle this this malicious na username, right? So this is this is what your game client was seeing before respawn patched the the bug. All right, so it's going to try to parse this really big name, and that's what's going to cause the crash. I'll explain exact detail why it's crashing in a second, but I want you to see that it is crashing, right? And let's also see how big the game thinks this buffer is this big. It thinks this buffer is 180 big, but as you can clearly see, this is way more than 180 big, right? So look what happens when I try to parse this. Uh, and look at that. We got a we got an um, exception access violation. So in other words, that's basically a, f a crash. Um, the only reason that the game hasn't crashed yet or exited yet is because I have it open in the debugger, which gives me a chance to inspect what's going on in the memory. And um, basically, it's copied way out of bounds because of um, the vulnerability, which I'm going to go into detail in a second. And you can actually see that out of bounds copy in the game's memory in this dump. And look what happens when I resume the process. It just crashes, right? So that's, that's what you were seeing when this bug wasn't patched. All right, and here I actually have the game engine's code um, put in inside of a decompiler or a disassembler. So this is a tool that uh, reverse engineers and exploit developers use to basically take apart existing programs and see how they work on the inside. So here we have that function that we were crashing in, and I've basically cleaned up and annotated this, um, this decompilation for you so you can understand what's going on. I'll walk you through it. So um, the important part you want to see is um, right here. So it, it first gets like a um, location in the memory that your input data is at, right? And that's perfectly fine. So what's the problem is, is that it calculates the end of that buffer. So in our debugger earlier, that would be the end of our name. Let's say we're processing this room string, right? So this would be the start location. It would, it would be probably this, this, this quotation mark. And the end would be at this, um, this three. Right, So it's going to try to calculate the end location of this piece of text based on the start location and then plus some number of characters. Right, So this is fine. The start location is correct. But what, what goes wrong is that when it tries to calculate the end location of this text, 
if you give it a very big name, uh, past um, 65,000 characters big, it's actually going to you know truncate that size. And it's only going to look at, it's going to think that's, uh, that size is a lot smaller than it is. So for example, let, let me show you in the calculator. What happens is, let's say I have my size, is I, I give it a 70,000 character long name, right? Um, <laughs> and what's going to happen is, is that everything past these first four hex digits, it's going gonna, it's gonna to basically throw those away. It's going to overflow that size, and it's going to truncate it so it thinks, oh, it's only 4,000 characters. But since we gave it a 70,000 character name, but it only thinks that the size is 4,000, it's only going to make space for a 4,000 size username. But it's going to try to jam all 70,000 um, characters into that buffer. And that's the buffer overflow here. Um, in addition, um, because of the logic of this function, it's actually going to copy way past the end of the buffer in most cases, especially if you're using these Unicode escapes. So because of that, that's what leads to the buffer overflow. You end up copying way out of bounds and you crash the game. Now the question is, is, is this exploitable? And I would say this is pretty much not exploitable unless you're extremely motivated as an attacker. And the reason is that this is um, what we refer to as a heap buffer overflow as opposed to a stack buffer overflow. So heap buffer overflows are very tricky to exploit properly, um, especially on modern systems. So as an attacker, if I was trying to exploit this bug, I would first have to you know, get a way to get reliable control over the heap layout of the program, basically um, what's where inside the memory. And that's very tricky to do as a remote attacker. Um, I have to find some remote memory leak or memory spray primitive. And that's, that's, not e that's easier said than done. And then even after that, I have to be extremely delicate about how I use these to control the, the layout of the game's memory so that when I run my, um, my trigger bug, the payload, that it'll actually, um, you know, uh, work properly. I would say that unless someone is extremely skilled at exploiting these types of overflows, um, it's probably just going to crash the game. I would say the likelihood of exploiting this bug is quite low. Um, there has been some debate over like, oh, well, X input doesn't have ASLR on. And that is true, but um, even if you want to make, you know, the ROP chain to X input, you have to put the ROP chain somewhere in memory, and the question is, is like, okay, where is it in the memory, right? You don't know where that is. So, <laughs> especially for a 64-bit program, um, that's very hard to guess right, even with, you know, like spraying or stuff like that. So not only would you have to have multiple bugs chained in a row to make this work, it would still be extremely unreliable and tricky. So that's why I think that people shouldn't be so afraid. They're like, I've, I, I've seen, you know, Discord posts are like, oh, you need to change your bank account password. Uh, better safe than sorry. I'm like, okay. I mean, sure. I think that if you want to be paranoid, you can go ahead and change all your passwords. But I think that kind of advice is just scaring people for no reason. I think that I would say it's like, you know, less than a 1% chance. I wouldn't even give it a 1% chance that it's being exploited actively with RCE back um, like yesterday. So yeah, uh, I'll probably release some more in-depth info on exactly the exploit vulnerability. Um, I don't want to do that in a YouTube video because you'll, that will probably be boring to you guys. But I hope that gives you also some insight into the process that I use when I am analyzing these crashes or trying to root cause a bug. Um, shout outs to my friends who helped me uh, debug this crash and also isolate the crash using a fuzzer. Um, shout out to our contacts in the game modding community that pointed us towards this piece of code. They were like, hey, we think this might be the code piece of code that's crashing. Um, so shout out to them and thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, you know what? Use your brain. Don't just trust shit that people say on Discord. Use your brain. Think critically about it. Is this person qualified to make this statement? Who is this guy? Why, why is he telling me this? Why should I trust them? All right, use your brain. All right, thanks for watching.